very excited to be here this night, and uh, I hope you are too. This is my soul and I, and let us take this couple of minutes to first of all meditate a little bit, if you will. If you can close your eyes or take any comfortable position you want, that's fine with me. We'll be challenging the devil today. I don't like him. And I don't like what he's doing in your life. I don't like him. I don't like what he's done to you and your family, your children your future, your reputation, your personality, your being, your whole entirety, your environment, your home, and your earth. I don't like him. And I don't fear him. He has no right to treat you the way he's done it. He was cast out of heaven, not to come and torment man. He forced himself, he forced his way into our territory. And since then, he's been manipulating us, knocking our heads, causing confusion here and there. He comes as an angel of light. Angel of darkness, angel of life, angel of death. He manifests in so many ways. One moment he can be a friend. The next morning, moment he's a foe. You never know his colors. And he never wants you to know his colors. He's the devil the evil one ruling the earth. He has set forth his principalities in all the corners of the world. He has them as queens, as kings, as presidents, as leaders, as courts, as businesses, as banks, as money as his crown and he uses it against us. He ruins our families. He ruins our lives. Ruin our children. Ruin our future. Ruin our joy, our happiness. Ruin our personality, who we are. He takes that away from us and makes us to become laughing stocks. Make us to become enemies of ourselves. 
and our families, our friends, our relatives, those that are supposed to be our protectors become our enemies. And we leave it every day. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? I don't like it. And today I want us to touch certain areas of his life that will shake his foundation. And if you're listening to me, Happiness is not purchasable with money. I know that we ought to be happier than the happiest person on earth today. We ought to be healthier than the healthiest person on earth today. And yes, we ought to be smarter than the smartest person on earth today. The gift of happiness is not purchasable with money. The path is through meditation in which you can achieve freedom and get release from the burden of material pursuit, pursuit, pursuit. Practical self-healing from sickness, poverty, negative vibration and suffering. My mission in this life is to confront evil. My job is to point a pervading light. We believe in one misconception and another. Ashin. The needs and wants of man are steadily increasing by day. The scourge of daily unrest, the more he has, the more he wants. We are not born into this world to accumulate material wealth. What a waste of precious time and effort. There are better ways to do this, brethren. Practical self-healing from sickness, poverty, negative vibration and suffering is the purpose of this call. Learn how to unlock negative childhood beliefs and curses holding you back from finding joy while living your dreams and vision. Enter into your own consciousness. Meditation save my life. A ship breaking the horse gave me strength and made my bone strong. A shin is one of the most effective ways to keep your heart strong. Find peace, love, joy, happiness, abundant life, stability, and everything you ever desire in life. My soul and I has prepared a special package for you. I want you to do something with yourself, with your life tonight. I implore you to make use of what you will learn today. Don't play games with it. You've played a lot of games with your life. A lot of blame games. A lot of oversabi. What a, a Cameroonian will say, oversabi, too much? No. I know too much. Science hasn't proven it. Physics hasn't proven it. This and that hasn't proven it. My culture, my tradition hasn't proven it. Oversabi, I know too much. Tonight, take that baggage with you of I know too much and of Asadi. Put it in a pocket. Keep it somewhere. And let's explore something new. Because that baggage hasn't helped us. It hasn't helped you. It hasn't helped me. It hasn't helped our society. If it did, we will not be in what we are going through now. Israel will not be on fire. Syria will not be on fire. Iraq will not be on fire. Afghanistan 
will not be on fire. Russia will not be pounding another count. America will not be panicking. China, will, China and Japan will not be exploding with pollutants. The world will not be littered with your garbage. If what you have, if that your baggage, that your bundle, you have with you that whenever there is an idea, you bring it out of Asabi, was working. We will not be where everyone is scared whether there is going to be third world war. We don't know what terrorist act will take place again. We don't know the next one after France. If that too much no had yielded fruit, we will not get terrorists around the world doing what they are doing. We will not get ourselves building bombs and guns and drones. We will not be creating enemies and trying to create races among human beings. We will not be creating pollutants, slittering the whole world with them. We will understand what we are doing here if that too much no was working for us. I believe it's time for us to take a step back and ask ourselves, what am I doing? How right am I? How my actions are helping me? How do they work for me? How has it worked for me? I think it is time for the leaders to ask themselves, how does this game I'm playing with all these people, with all these souls, all these lives on earth, this bombing, this shooting, this killing, this manipulation, this gathering of much more material wealth, money, power, authority, how is it helping me, my reputation, my neighbors, my country, my fellow human being? How is it working? For me. Ask yourself that question. How is it working for you? How has it worked? You may have the money. You don't have peace. You may have the education. You may not be as rich as you think you're supposed to be. You may have all of that, but you still lack Stability. Your environment is not secure, so you feel insecure. No matter what you already have, you still feel a vacuum in your life. Don't you think it makes sense to pull back and sit and ask, my, and ask yourself, is this approach I'm taking right? And if it's right, why am I still not stable? Why am I not peaceful? Why do I need bodyguards, guns, bombs, drones, medication? I think a smart person would take stock of his business, so too of his life. When are you going to take stock of your life, about your health? about your mental stability, about your surrounding, your neighborhood, your finances, your spiritual life, your growth, your entire well-being. When will you sit down and take stock so that you can know whether the direction you're taking is the right direction or not? When? Will you take stock when there was going to be another blow up again in another country after France? Or are you telling yourself, no, it's them. It will never arrive me. Hmm. The same people in France who died, 
the hundreds of people who died, if they had told them last week, they would have said, it will never be me. That's the error all of us, all of us, we humans, that breathe the air and have a life, one minute to live another day. We think and feel. We don't believe that it can arrive us anytime. And when it arrives, other people, we really don't pay too much attention because we feel it, it will never reach where we are. Tonight, I want to remind us of something. That the moments we live are very critical. And what can we do about them? I want to let us know that all those people who are victims of terrorism around the world, all those people who are victims of war around the world, all those people who are victims of slavery, denigration, insult, intimidation, oppression around the world, all of them, all the rich people, all the privileged, all the upper class, those that are powerful, I would love all of you to know that there is no difference. There is no difference amongst all of us. The Bible tells us that all of us, even with the dogs and animals, the dead ones and the live ones, they are the same. What can happen to a dog can happen to a lion. What can happen to an animal can happen to a human being. It's only a person who is naive who will say, no, it can't happen to me. You're lying to yourself. And that's what, why I want to share today should be very important and should take it seriously. It's about war. It's about a fight. It's about survival. It's about preparation. It's about understanding. It's about knowing the situation on the ground. It's about developing tactics. How am I going to protect myself? How am I going to act? How am I going to behave? How am I going to position myself so that I don't get carried away by the wind, by the flood? By the tornado. Because millions of people will be swept away, if not billions. If you don't prepare, you're going to be one of them. Don't tell me it cannot arrive you because when it wants to arrive, you will not have an idea. You are not God, so you know nothing. We live perilous moments, brethren. Moments that are critical. Moments that one now and is shaking. Every time you lie on your bed, you don't know whether there is going to be an attack in your home. Moments where you don't know whether there is going to be a terrorist attack in another part of the country or even where you are. You lock your door. Somebody has the means to enter without you even knowing. The person may not even use the door. A drone. We now create technology that can do anything, can monitor you, everything. You cannot hide from anything. We live moments where security is slowly disappearing, dissipating from our world. Wickedness is taking over. Goodness, kindness. Chaos is taking over peace. And we are doing nothing about it. Absolutely nothing. All we are doing is fighting after power. Fighting after money. Running after money. Running after wealth, materialism, and thinking that the more we catch, the more we can feel satisfied and protected. Not knowing that. The more you have, the more the target you are. 
and the more you, you get disconnected from reality. Because you will begin to pay attention to what you have accumulated instead of paying attention to what is reality. You will not be connected to nature because you will be connected to what you have accumulated. He that has nothing and is living in a village is much more connected to nature and can read the signs of the times. We in the cities, we know nothing. Tonight, I want us to touch areas that can awaken your consciousness up to understand the times we are inside. And we will look into the words of somebody who spoke it thousands of years ago and was warning us about these times that we leave. He told us over and over to watch out for certain signs. And that when we begin to see those signs, we begin to learn like babies, what we need to do. Learn everything anew. Brethren, if you want to survive the moments we live in, then you have to be very vigilant. Because he said we have to be vigilant. You have to be cautious. You must learn to be cautious. The times we live are perilous times. There are wars and rumors of wars. I don't have to be a testimony to what is going on, but we can talk about certain countries. We know what is happening. Just a couple of days in France, hundreds of people were cut down. Innocent souls were killed. You go to Syria, people are dying. You go to Nigeria and Cameroon, you see people are dying in Chad. Boko Haram is tearing apart people. You go to Israel, it's the same. We are living perilous times, brethren. If it's not war, it's calamity, it's earthquake. It's plane crash, it's pollution, it's slavery, it's one thing or another. If it's neither of those things, it's our family, divorce, heartbreak, destruction, confusion, hate, manipulation, exploitation. In our own families, our own blood is against us. That tells us something. If that doesn't tell you something, you are asleep. You are asleep. You are sleeping so deep. You are very deep in sleep. If you don't believe that these are the signs of the end of times, and you think that the end of time is maybe the entire world just coming to an end, they are the signs of the end of your own time. They are the signs to tell you that your life is so close to end because you can be shot by this type of wickedness out there. Your own life can end at any time. A stray bullet with this type of wickedness, with this type of hate even in your own family. Your own family can poison you, can sell you as a soul Jesus Christ, can hurt you, can end your own time on earth. But the thing is, it's going to be massive because it will happen here, there, up, down, there, there, and so it will look like the whole world is coming to an end. When you begin to see these things, it's a sign of the end of time. We here in the United States understand that the Third World War can break out anytime soon. No one is doubting whether it is going to happen or not. The thing is, when? When is it going to happen? We know that. But we also believe that. No, even if it happens, it's not going to reach us because we are special. Or because we, we live in America. 
Oh, because we are well protected. We have the guns. We have the bombs. We are privileged. No, it's not going to reach us. You are right. If you told Saddam Hussein 10 years ago that he would be dead, he would tell you you are crazy. If you told Bin Laden 20 years ago that he would be running up and down and hiding, he would tell you you'd be crazy. <laughs> Brethren, no human being is invincible. If there is rumors of war, third world war, if it breaks out, you are not left out. If you are left out, it's not because you are a macho man. It's not because you are invincible. You are not better than me. You are not better than Joe. You are not better than Amlaka, any other person. You are not. So pay attention. Pay close attention to your life. Because that life you have is very important. So is the life of another person. And what things are happening around you, it means you need to pay attention to what is happening to yourself, to your environment, your neighbor, your friends, and everyone, because if it happens to them, it can happen to you. In moments like this, we have to pull back from our craziness, our busy lives, and really ask pertinent questions about these situations and how we can change strategy. It's important. And we can only do this when we understand the signs of the times and really understand that this is real. Brethren, I can't overemphasize how important it is for us to focus. It's very important for us to focus. There is one thing I want to, to understand. Be you a Muslim. A Christian, a Buddhist, fellowshipping with Krishna consciousness, or Rastafarian, or an atheist, agnostic, mystic, whatever you belong, whatever faith is yours. Whatever society you belong in, whatever group you belong in, whether you are a Chinese, an Arab, an Indian, a Korean, an American, an African, Australian, British, French, Italian, Mexican, Japanese, it doesn't really matter where you come from. You have faith. At this point, please, I want you to put it aside. Let's look at something. Let your faith not be a hindrance of what I am about to share with you. Because if I were you or in your place, and I belong to all those faiths, and I get something from the Quran that makes sense and I know it can save my life, I will use my common sense. I will keep that faith and religion and my rays aside and look at that thing first if it can save my life and save the lives of other people. If I am a Christian, I will do the same thing. If I'm a Buddhist, I will do the same thing. If I am Confucianist, I will do the same thing. Because common sense tells me that I have to save my life first before I begin to consider anything else. Because without my life, I cannot consider anything. Without my life, I cannot even consider my faith. I hope it makes sense. Tonight, 
I'll be reading a book which is maybe not a book that is very comfortable with most of us, but that's what I've chosen to use tonight because I think it's convenient for me to search certain areas inside that can help us understand certain things about our lives and take care of. So if you are not a Christian, feel comfortable to listen to me read something from the Bible that you can benefit from. You don't have to buy it, but let's use it as an illustration. If you are a Christian, then it's understandable that we can work together for you to really hear what I want to say from what I get from the Bible. But then I also look at the Bible as a universal book that everyone can use because it contains lots of knowledge. Just like the, the Quran, the Bhagavad Gita, and other spiritual books that have a connecting rod amongst them. Happiness is not purchasable with money. I know that we ought to be happier than the happiest person on earth today. We ought to be healthier than the healthiest person on earth today. And yes, we ought to be smarter than the smartest person on earth today. The gift of happiness is not purchasable with money. The path is through meditation in which you can achieve freedom and get released from the burden of material pursuit, pursuit, pursuit. Practical self-healing from sickness, poverty, negative vibration and suffering. My mission in this life is to confront evil. My job is to point a pervading light. We believe in one misconception and another. Ashina. The needs and wants of man are steadily increasing by day. The scourge of daily unrest, the more he has, the more he wants. We are not born into this world to accumulate material wealth. What a waste of precious time and effort. There are better ways to do this, brethren. Practical self-healing from sickness, poverty, negative vibration and suffering is the purpose of this call. Learn how to unlock negative childhood beliefs and curses holding you back from finding joy while living your dreams and vision. Enter into your own conscious meditation. Save my life. A breaking the horse, gave me strength and made my bone strong. A is one of the most effective ways to keep your heart strong. Find peace, love, joy, happiness, abundant life, stability, and everything you ever desire in life. My soul and I has prepared a special package for you.